speak to us. Thank you, Father, for the word that you are releasing today, that it's our time and it's our turn. Let not just be a cliche. Manifest your word. Let there be spiritual enforcement of this prophetic word in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. So, uh, on Thursday, we will be participating in um, an apostolic discussion or seminar uh, that is chaired by our father, the bishop, Bishop Tudor Bismarck. And it is, we were supposed to have gone to Kenya. We were supposed to be uh, going to Kenya, but it's now being done online. Uh, but dad then said we, uh, we can come to the office so that we can be with him in his boardroom. So coming on, on Thursday, starting from 11 to about 2, we will be in a council uh, of African apostles meeting where uh, apostles from different parts of Africa, east, west, north, south, will congregate and will be discussing on African issues and what the church can do. And I really want to say that the church is a central part of the future of Africa. So what we are doing and what we are mold, uh, modeling, what we are praying for is part of the future and the destiny of Africa. It's part of the future and the destiny of Africa. And for most of you, because you are young, you are going to see a transformed Africa. You're going to see a different Africa from what you see now. Because for every people group, according to the words of my father, Bishop Tudor, he says that for every people group, God never leaves a people group without a season when they rise to the top. So when you look into history, there was a time when Africa was at the top. We know that language, mathematics, was all discovered in Africa. So if you look at what happened in Egypt, that is Africa. Then there was a civilization where the East rose. And we can see how China and built the Great Wall and all those kind of things. Then the British. So if you like uh, philanthropic history, you can go and see how kingdoms have evolved. And at this time, we are in total belief that Africa is the last frontier. When you go everywhere else, Africa is the last place to be developed, to have bridges with so much land, with so much people. And it's our time and it's our turn. And for most of you, I want you to prepare for that time. And that's my job as an African apostle. I had so many opportunities to leave this country. So many. I can still leave you if I want, but I'm not going to leave Africa. Those who are going, you are not, you are not called, I'm called for Africa. So I'm here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But we are believing God. We are putting our faith that our time is coming and our turn has come. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I hear an amen in the house? Amen. Can you hear an amen in the house? Amen. Go to slide number two. A few facts about Africa that you need to know. Africa is now, uh, has got a population of over 1.4 billion people. How many billion? 1.4. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you because when you guys go on Google or on chat GTP, some of you, I don't know what you'll be searching, but this is what I'll be searching. I'm searching statistics. The last time I was presenting at an Israel conference, and I had to go online and study what Israel has done, and it's so amazing. So. There are 1.4 billion people on the African continent. And the most important statistics there is that over a billion of them are under the age of 35. How many under 35s are in the house? Lift up your hand. If you're under 35, lift up your hand. Lift, lift it up. Don't, lift, don't, don't go like this. You're not a mid. Lift it up. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So more than 70% of the house is under 35. So the future belongs to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The future belongs to me. And that 1.4 billion is equivalent to 16% of the world population. Of the world population. 
Now, I'm going to be speaking some, some few things because we've got people with different levels. They are accountants, they are chartered accountants, they are lawyers, they are people, so they can understand this, this. They can understand some of these things. Now, when we talk about the GDP of any nation or of a region, we are talking about the total amount of production that is happening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it is then said that the GDP of Africa is 3.1 trillion, which means if you put all the money, all the hustling, that all the Africans are doing, those 1.4 billion, is equivalent to 3.1 uh, 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 trillion US dollars. But the amazing thing is that there is a company which is worth 2 trillion, everyone. Apple is worth 2 trillion. Google is worth, you know, so if you put what is called the, 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 the top five technology groups, they are worth over six, eight trillion. And these are companies owned by individuals. And they are doing better than the whole of Africa from Cape to Cairo. The devil is a liar. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? The devil is a liar. And of those 1.4 billion people, 34% of them are living below the poverty datum line. The poverty datum line is when you survive on less than $2 a day. So if your, all your income is $60 and below, you are below the poverty datum line and you are considered poor globally by, by, by UN. Okay? So don't worry, poor, poor. So poor, poverty is in levels. Then there are, there, are, there are people, there are poor that are poor that are not going to live $5 a day, which means $150 US dollars. So when, you, when we move that figure to $100, that figure goes almost to 60%. Then somebody accuses me that you are teaching business in church. Yet most of our people are poor. How do we then get money to you? We have to train you and give you the mind. That's why we are asking you, and that's why we are giving you things and training you for things that I paid for. When I did my own mentorship, I paid 15,000 US dollars to learn how to do business, to learn how to manage a business. I paid, and I'm giving it for free, not because I am stupid, but I'm trying to give you an opportunity that you can never get in a lifetime. Are you, hear, are you hearing what I'm saying? So we are deliberate. We are deliberate about what we are doing in church. We are not just coming and saying, Gumbaya, Gumbaya, and just sing and dance like what we have been doing all these years. But we are coming here to be transformed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we are a transformational and an empowerment ministry which is here to empower and to transform Africa through the Africans that are seated here. That's where we are raising you to be leaders. That's where we are raising you to be influencers. That's where we are raising you to take your place. It is our call. Our call is to help you to succeed. And we know exactly what you are doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why we pray. We are praying like never before. And some people are saying, ah, my program, I wonder. You are backsliding. Anybody who complains that my program, he says, I wonder. Bower, how, how many times does a bar open? Even when I was in my thunderstorm, I was in my place, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go, I remember. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. And churches were closed. So don't tell me that we have got too much church. We actually need too much. The kind of, 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 of places that we are coming from, the kind of, of poverty that we are dealing with, you need more church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The kind of, of, of thoughts and issues that you are dealing with, you need more church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello? And so the life expectancy in Africa now is now 64. We we were speaking with certain doctors that most doctors die before the age of 60. 56. For Zimbabwe, the average life expectancy is 56. A few years ago, it was 36. So if you are 35, you don't die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now it's 56. 
It's 56. One in four people live in slums. What is the definition of Islam? Islam is a place that's got no water, no, no road, no sewage system, no power. You are just living. That's Islam. So some of you right now, you are saying, that I understand. But it's a what? It's a slum. It's a slum. And then you come and say, Pastor, oh no, just tell us about going to heaven. What about here on earth? You need to live here on earth. Am I, are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to live here on earth well as you go to heaven. Because if you don't do that, you won't get to heaven. Who no backslide? Ne namo. I was talking to someone that the devil is so good. He will give other people money to a backslide. But most will give namo to a backslide. Next slide. So what are the opportunities in Africa? Unused land, underutilized land. Number of natural resources is this last frontier. If you go to other nations, everywhere it is built. If you travel from Harare to Bulawayo, you'll just see flat land of nothing. We can literally build a new city. And say, you know what? We are, we are starting afresh. We are taking the whole city. We are building a new city. We are going to plant this new thing. And we've got the land. I'm just, it's just me thinking. The number of youth in Africa is 22% of the world. So the labor of the world is here. That's why the rest are trying to create robots. But we've got the labor. We've got the people. The future belongs. Right now, in, in, in Japan, they are having a crisis in 10 years' time. They have got no young people. All the people are old, and they are dying. So their population is decreasing. And some of them, some of the people, they are so rich, they have got nobody to pass money to. And here in Zimbabwe, I'm 46. There's no Zimdara. I'm the Sekuru. Huh? So what are the hierarchy of needs in Africa? Number one. Next slide. Africa needs Jesus. The, Af the number one need in Africa is Jesus. Is Jesus. And I'm speaking to you that you must make a choice whether you decide to serve God or you serve your ancestors. African, we are very, just because our ancestors, our predecessors serve does not mean that we need to continue doing the wrong thing. There's only one God. And arguments will come. So many platforms, people saying, hey, Tarasa, Chivani, Chedu, Tarasa. Culture, there's a difference between African culture and African religion. So culture, Yogena Norora is good. Culture of respect is good. So what we have decided to do as this church, we retain the good things in our culture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you cannot come as an African child with a palm shot to greet your father. It's not in our culture. And we will not accept it. Am I talking to somebody? Hello? But when it comes to things of worship, it's not African culture, that's African religion. So when it comes to religious things, you make a choice. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve your ancestors or are you going to serve God? For us in this house, we have decided to serve God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God we are serving. You make your choice. Ask your neighbor, what choice have you, have you made? And the reason is this. Next slide. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's why I say that <laughs> the greatest need is, is Jesus said, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Not to keep you poor, but to bring you out of your poverty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Jesus will satisfy your spiritual poverty, will satisfy your mental poverty, will satisfy your physical poverty. He will pull you out of all kinds of poverties. And that's what we are aiming to do in this church. Am, am I talking to somebody? So we want people that are dedicated, that are persuaded that they are in the right thing and we are doing the right thing. Am I talking to somebody? To heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover of sight to the blind and set at liberty those who are oppressed. That is the purpose of Jesus. So when Jesus comes into your life, he deals with the poverty, he deals with the diseases, he deals from, with all the bondages and he sets you free from everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and, but I want you to see that it takes an anointing to deal with poverty. It takes a what? An anointing. And if you are a member of this house, there is an anointing in this house to deal with poverty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So any level of poverty, it is dealt with with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Say, I receive, I receive. the anointing receive. to deal with poverty. Am I talking to somebody here? Number two, you, the hierarchy of needs when it comes to Africa, right now, if this is public knowledge, we are in, we've got an outbreak of cholera in Zimbabwe right now. Just last week, this is public news, it's, it's in the newspapers, 300 and almost just under 300 people got cholera. There are thousands that are admitted right now. And people are dying. But cholera is a disease of poor sanitation and poor water reticulation. It's a poverty disease. It's a poverty disease. We've got poor health comes, out health come, uh, outcomes. People, we still have ladies dying because of not having delivery services. And the, 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 the wealth of a nation is, is actually measured by how they treat their pregnant and how they treat the neonates, how many of, people, of, of, of children that are born survive to be adults. And that is the measure of how successful you are. So your success is not measured by the car you drive. But as a nation, we are measured by how we take care of our poor. And the Bible says there must be no poor among you. Am, am I talking to somebody? I'm getting somewhere. I know it's a bit of data. But we are not here to be religious non-thinkers. We are here to, to have impact in our generation. And if you, if your religion and your praying does not help you to have impact in your family, in your region, then your praying is useless. Am I talking to somebody? We are here to change the world. Am I talking to somebody? Number three need of Africa is where did you change? Is to change the mindset, our mental health and our mindset. Africa needs wisdom. Africa needs to think. Africa needs to work. So when I went to Dubai last, uh, uh, during our a Christmas holiday, Pastor D went to shop. I was at home. I, I, I remained in the, in the place that we were staying, and she brought this book on the leadership of Dubai. She bought the book. I read the book, and I said, we can change our world by learning to do well and copying how other people have done it. Can I say something about success? Success is predictable. It is as predictable as the, you can predict that the sun is coming out tomorrow. 
And I like what somebody said, Brian Tracy, he says, success leaves clues. And if you follow the footsteps of those who are successful, you can also be successful. But the Bible then says in Isaiah, put Isaiah, must be Isaiah 1 verse 17. Put Isaiah 1 17. Isaiah 1 17. Put it quickly. It says, learn to do well. Give me the, the learn the, learn to do good. Give me the NIV. Give me the, the, uh, the KJV. Learn to do right. Learn to do. Just tap your neighbor and say, learn to do well. Which means you can learn to do bad. And most of Africa has learned to do bad. How do I know that? I see it by the way you drive. In South Africa, I was in South Africa a few, when there was no uh, 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 power, the one that arrives at the intersection is the one that goes first. And there is no congestion. But come to Zimbabwe. Huh? They, they have learned how to do good. Somebody who is last, and you, you are locked there for three hours. Who has ever been locked for three hours? Learn, learning to do stupid things. But if a generation decides to say, you know what, we are, we are learning to do well. We are learning to do well. We are going to do well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop at, stop at the traffic light. Pick up the paper and put it in the bin. The other time I was going to Chitungwiza. If you're a member of this church and you're, and you're living in Chitungwiza, so, so, you know, when it is raining, the grass is like here. So somehow, somebody cut the grass. <laughs> the paper in that little... In, in that middle island, it was as if it was a dumpster. I hear him say, people were throwing everything, throwing everything. Learn to do well. Learn to do well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, don't be a litter bug. Don't throw out litter out of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The other time I was hit by a cane. Somebody, I don't go drive. I can't again. And this can come, came bouncing. Gobble, gobble. And come on, you are driving a shika shika. I'm driving a machine, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you throwing some litter? I'm driving a machine. Learn to do well. Say, Father, I'm learning to do well. Don't throw trash out of the window. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In our neighborhood, the, the trash people don't come. So we organize somebody who can take trash for us. It's only $10. They give you the plastic. They come and take. They are very efficient. But somebody trying to save $10 in the middle of the night. We will take uh, plastics of, pump, of, of, of pampas and chocolate and leave them by the roadside. What a shock. Learn to do well. Learn to do well. It's only in Africa when you get into a public toilet, you find something written by a hand. Hieroglyphics written by a hand. You look at the material used to write. Hey! Tell your neighbor, I'm learning to do well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, put your right hand on your head and say, Father, change my mindset. Change my mindset. I refuse to be an ordinary African in my thinking. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm learning to do well. And if we decide to do well, we might start here, but we'll be starting a revival. We might be starting a, a, a movement of doing the right things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do the right thing. Man, today was the first time I really cried for Africa. This place can be rescued. But we have to change. So how are you going to change your life. Go to slide number seven. 
how do you rescue your life in Africa? A few things which you can do, which you must do to rescue your own life. It doesn't matter where you are starting, it doesn't matter where you are going, it doesn't matter where you are. But if you decide to do these things, your life is coming up. Number one, you must be serious with God. First Corinth, uh, Chronicles uh, 16 verse 30, that is the message Bible. God is serious business. God is what? Take him what? Seriously. He put, he put the earth in place and it's not moving. He said, so, so what he's saying, God created everything. God is serious. You must take him seriously. And I look at some of you, you don't take God seriously. I look at what you do, you don't take God seriously. I look at the things that you don't come for, you don't take God seriously. You don't come for prayer, you don't go for home sales, you don't go for trainings, you, and, and, you, and, and you want God to be serious. You are not serious with God. Say, I choose to be serious with God. Youth, you have to be serious with God. Men, you have to be serious with God. Jewels, you have to be serious with God. Everybody in this house must be serious with God. That's the number one need. If you're not serious with him, you will not make it in Africa. You will be another statistics. After 10 years, there are... 30% who are poor. But you, you are hearing me today. You must not be in that statistics. So today, this morning, I opened. So I'm sent by you know, the Business Insider. Those are the magazines that I listen to. I don't do scope. I don't do all that nonsense. So they sent me and said, you can, if you want to be 1% off in any nation. So they were saying, if you are living in, in, in Monaco, the richest place, it's a small island with 40,000 people, 30,000 are millionaires. For you to be in the top 1% in that nation, you must be worth 22 million. In the U.S., for you to be in the top 1% of the population, you must be worth 1.5 million US net worth. In the UK, you must be worth 3.3. So I said, if I go to the UK, I'm in the 1%. I'm definitely in the 1%. In South Africa, I then looked and went to Africa, according to the hierarchy. In Singapore, you need to be to be 5.3. Uh, in, in Australia, they are better. You need to be about 3.2 million. Then I came to uh, China. For you to be in the top 1% of, of the Chinese, with all everything that has happened, you need to be worth just under 1,990,000. In South Africa, you need to be worth 200,000 US. In Kenya, you need to be worth 20,000. Zimbabwe was not there. I said, so in Zimbabwe, to be, to be, to be, so I, 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 I thought you need to, to have something that is worth 1,000. One, just 1,000 you might be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if you really look, look, let's look at it. The sofas that you have, you, 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 you bought them at, at Grandview 8. They are, they are, they are, they are wire 20 or 80 dollars. I hear what I'm saying? The, the, the stuff that you are, you, are, you are cooking, it's second hand. I hear what I'm saying? The clothes that you have, they are all bare. You, uh, it's 12, 50 dollars for your Baba and my Ivana cheese. Yes, I hear what I'm saying? I hear what I'm saying? I hear what I'm saying? Hello? Can, can I say it like, so, 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 Usa Derere? Thousand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then you are saying, Pastor, you are preaching, you, you, tell us more, we, we, what are you saying? Am I talking to somebody? In Kenya, Kenya is more developed. It's got more money than Zimbabwe. 20,000. We're going to only 20,000. We're going to top one. One percent. We're going to top one. Some of you, you've got your car. It's worth 2,000. We're bed. Ugurara uri fi, wakare. Aye rende. Oro mese mugurara. Wakare. Aye rende. Guru 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 guru. Aye dogo. 
Hein? TV. TV, 40 inch TV. I bought a 40 inch TV for one of my clinics and it was 108. You know, who knows what I'm talking about? That's Africa for you. That's Africa for you. Can I speak it like I'm, I'm hearing what I'm saying? But I did this, I couldn't I did this, I I heard what I'm saying. We need to rise. And I'm here to declare a word over your life. It's your time and it's your turn. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are a member of this house, in the next five years you will be in the 1%, not only of Zimbabwe, but of Africa. But you have to become serious with God. Number two, am I talking to somebody? So, as we as a Musoro Wang. Yes. Some of you, your net worth right now is I put it on 500 church on us. Laptop, they wire. Phone on a Gambuzi. I bought my son Gambuzi recently. A good Mbuzi in the box, $25. So, no, 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 Because with one of my cars, I can buy a ten thousand dollar car, and I might have ten. So no, it's that is it in a motor for no, it's, it's different. <laughs> Number two, what you must do to rescue your life. Am I speaking to somebody in this church now? Number two, you must have a vision. Habakkuk 2, verse 2 to 3. Then the Lord answered me and said, who answered me? No. I heard him say, write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. If you've got no vision, you are not going to make it in Africa. You must have a vision. That's why this church, we've got a vision. We are building that thing. We know exactly what we are doing. We know exactly where we are going. We, and I posted when we were looking for a place like this, to get to a place which is ours, which is struggled. That wasn't too weird. We posted our vision and we got our place because every vision comes to pass. Ask your neighbor, do you have a vision for your life? That's not a vision. A vision is clear, and the Lord answered, so the Lord is answering you. How will I come out? Write the vision down. Make it plain. It means it must be clear. How much, where, how, everything must be there, and it must be written. A vision in the head, not written, is a wish. It's not a vision. So God did not say, and write the wishes, uh, or wish. He said, write it down. So ask your neighbor, do you have things that you want written? Down. Number three. Out of time, I've got five more minutes. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs 3 verse. So we read there. Leave, leave it there. Learn what's needed. That's how you're going to rescue your life. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all the precious and pleasant things. How do you get the knowledge? You learn the knowledge. How did I become a psychiatrist? I went to school. How am I learning how to preach and to be a pastor? I went to be trained. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are learning what is needed to address the problems in our lives or in our world. What have you learned this year that can solve problems in your own life or around you? What have you learned? So if you are going to rescue your life, you need to take God seriously. You need to have a vision. That vision, what it takes for you to have that vision, you must learn it. You must learn so we have these seminars 
Guess 50% of the people who are coming, none members of this church. The guy who is coming to talk to us is somebody who's not even a member of this church. Came, learned, went and practiced. Boom! It seems it's ripping up. At school, then. I tell Nanya who seems to have my mentorship is Taguda Zimi. Gambo, Gambo, I think it's really not that deliverance. Ah. But the Bible says, by knowledge, they shall be delivered. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. And, and, and some of you, you know, because you are not serious with your life, you take the things that we are saying here as if it's, it's nonsense. Or you come here to meet your friends. You don't come here to learn the word. But you must learn what is needed. I am learning what is needed. I'm learning what is needed to, to pastor and to be an apostle of a mega church. I'm learning what is needed for, to, to pastor multiple multiple churches. Huh? There are some people that I gave books on mega churches. and said, go and read what a mega church is. Because the way you're acting, you are acting as if you don't know what a mega church will, will, will come in. Some of the fights that you fight, you're fighting over little things. Fighting for crumbs. Yet there are 100,000 people out there that are waiting for our message. You can't even post one little thing on your Facebook and it is only the church. And yet you can post some, some nonsense and not even bring one person to Christ. So last year, do you know what I did? I did a course. Yes, social media marketing. The course, Yaga Costa, 5,500. So the guys who meet, you know, it dies. Two million and die. So one of said is Uva Group. It's not by revelation or it's not by God. Ah, the heavens opened. I had to go to school. I paid. I paid. You have to pay how to sing. You have to pay how to write a song. You have to pay somebody. Go and pay. Learn what is needed. But Africa, I did. I did. Number four. I'm about to finish. You must be mentored. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attend to wise counsel. I've got a mentor. And I tell you that I'm, I'm mentored. I caught my mentor. He have heard me quoting. I don't go to the doctor. I don't go to the doctor. Ah, no, Saka. Yeah, Papa, to die. So why can't you just quote? Because no one can say that you are mentored. That's why I tell you, according to the words of Bishop Tud, I got mentored. Ask your person, Ask the person next to you, who is mentoring you. You want to mentor somebody, but who is mentoring you? And you want to mentor somebody. Chicha on beta, you know, good two years ago. Chuck, I have an awesome beer. One deals with Vuns and Vuns. Who that took Vuns the G, Takatasa open you walk, a panana wants a true good up open you walk. They can answer Vuns and Vuns. Next to what? How did you get so messed up? Two so good, they are waiting. My the avoid is a worry. I hear what I'm saying. Manjo Unota, Maganda, good. Do so to us of Broga, what I saw say. How did you mess up your life like Dom Vuzo? And, and, and unfortunately, failures don't write books. And you must be careful who is mentoring you. Because wherever they are, where, where they are, that's where they are taking you. So some of you here, Urugut and Namenta, but Unikamun Kaurute, Utera hairstyle, they are dressing, what they are doing. Kubanga we church, you are being mentored. Watoka disciple going nowhere. I'm a disciple of Bishop Tudor Bismarck. So where he is, that's where I'm she? I'm going. He's in 29 countries. He's got over 1,000 pastors under him. He's building a $20 million church. 
the land, they get a 3.5 million. That's, that's my mentor there. That's my mentor. He drives a 600 messages. That's my mentor. So what do you want to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Panichi. I see him preaching at T.D. Jacks. Wow! Blowing the house. And no far as well. That's my mentor there. But I can see myself. I can see myself. Tell your neighbor you need a mentor. You are not that smart. Boss, don't go all smart, guy. Ah, uh, that's Johnny, You are not that smart. You need a mentor, we You need a mentor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you go to a choco and you wait. You need a what? You need a mentor. Some of you are too proud to be mentored by Pastor, 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 no, by Pastor D. Who has ever preached to 5,000 women? Dololo. Number five. Then we close. You're going to have to take massive action. You're going to have to take massive action. Your life is not going to change when you are lazy. You're going to have to take massive action. You write your, you're serious with God. Write down your plan. Learn how to do that plan. I hear anything. Get a mentor to help you execute that plan. And massive action. Massive action. Massive action. Massive action. You must be at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must be working and working hard. Because if you're going to rescue your life in Africa, it's not a walk in the park. Not everybody is going to be part of Gold Mafia. It's impossible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going to have to work. And I'm here to say that in all labor there is profit. When you work hard enough, the door will open, your gift will make room for you, and your life you will not only be 1% in Africa, but you will be 1% in the world. That's what we are. It's our time. It's our turn.